Mrs. Nivedita, founder of Shri Ahana Physiotherapy Academy. Our today's topic is a follow-up video of our scapulohumeral rhythm. Today we are going to see about clinical significance of scapulohumeral rhythm. We all know that the scapulohumeral rhythm is nothing but the coordinated movements of both the glenohumeral joint as well as the scapulothoracic joint during shoulder movements. Shoulder joint is the only joint that has maximum range of motion that is of 180 degrees during flexion and abduction movements. There are two main purposes of this scapulohumeral rhythm. One is it allows the glenoid fossa to provide a good position for the humeral head to move during shoulder movements. The other purpose is the changing portion of this glenoid fossa along with the humerus during shoulder movements keeps a healthy length tension relationship of the muscles that come across the glenohumeral joint. So these are the purposes of the scapulohumeral rhythm. The next thing that we are going to see is the muscles that are associated with these movements. That is during shoulder flexion, the muscles that are going to work here will be your uh, anterior deltoid, your pectoralis major and corcobrachialis. During the abduction movement of the shoulder, it will be your supraspinatus and your deltoid working together. And now the other movement will be your upward rotation of the scapula. Here it will be your upper trapezius, the lower trapezius and your uh, serratus anterior muscle. Understanding the movements of the scapulothoracic joint as well as the glenohumeral joint is very important to make a proper clinical diagnosis. So now I am going to give you two examples. The first example is going to be about the impingement syndrome. When there is an injury to the long thoracic nerve which is going to innervate the serratus anterior muscle, it will impair its function. As I told you earlier, the function of this serratus anterior muscle is to give your upward rotation of the scapula. So now when this nerve is impaired, when this nerve is injured, this muscle is going to lose its function. So the upward rotation of the scapula is restricted. So at this point, when you are trying to make an attempt to move your shoulder into abduction, what happens is the acromion remains stable. It will not move in relation with the humerus. So what happens, the humerus will fall under the acromion. The subacromial space here will be reduced. So when there is a reduction in this subacromial space, I have shown in the picture clearly. So with that you can understand that the subacromial space is reduced and the structures passing in between the subacromial space will get impinged. This is the thing resulting in shoulder impingement syndrome or rotator cuff disorders. Now the second example is going to be your adhesive capsulitis. The scapulohumeral rhythm in adhesive capsulitis will be disturbed. The glenohumeral joint capsule adheres to the joint in this condition. So this restricts the shoulder joint range of motion. So this in turn will disturb your scapulohumeral rhythm. Whenever you attempt to make shoulder joint abduction or flexion movements, what will happen is there will be significant substitution of the muscles that are present around the scapulothoracic area as well as your trunk muscles. You can see it clearly with the picture. When you ask a patient with adhesive capsulitis to lift his arm into flexion or abduction, you can see the compensatory movements along with that. So these are the examples where scapulohumeral rhythm gets disturbed and I hope with these examples it would have been clear to you all. Thank you.